Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you are enjoying at UICON. Like, it has been very amazing till now. Yeah, so my name is Usmita Oro. Uh, I work as an iOS engineer at Fuel. Uh, Fuel is a mobile uh, development company based on New York. So I'll be speaking about simplified wireless architecture. So to give you a little bit of context about this, about one and a half year back, like I suddenly realized that I should be writing more tests. And uh, I kind of uh, uh, started reading blogs and all, and everybody suggested that, OK, you want to write tests, so you should have a good architecture so that your code should be testable. So I uh, researched around uh, different architecture pattern. I started, uh, like I uh, researched MVVM, and then I stumbled upon Viper. Uh, the thing about Viper is that uh, there are very different, two different polarized view on Viper. So, so there are some people who are like very happy, okay, you Viper, you can write, you know, clean, testable, and maintainable code, and it's awesome. Uh, but there are other people who say, uh, it's kind of over-engineered approach, very complicated, you have to write protocols and all, it's part of code, so who wants to try that? Yeah, so I thought, like, this conflicting ideas in my mind, so I think, okay, let's give it a shot and see how things work out. So I'll be explaining some of the techniques I used to simplify uh, this architecture a bit and how I overcame the limitations. So let's uh, understand the philosophy behind this architecture. It, was, uh, it is based on clean architecture proposed by Robert C. Martin, known as Uncle Bob. Uh, and first adopted by uh, Konda Stoll and Jeff Gilbert, and you will find a very good article at obgc.io about it. So, uh, let's understand the principle behind this architecture. This architecture is based on two important principles, like a single responsibility principle and dependency inversion principle. First, we'll see single responsibility principle. As the name suggests, like, a uh, class should do one thing and it should do it right. Therefore, in this architecture, we have uh, various modules which have clearly defined responsibilities. Let's see one by one. First, we have entity. As we all know, entity represents a business object. For example, we are making an app for a, a restaurant, uh, restaurant list or something, so restaurant will be our entity. Uh, next layer is our module is the interactor. Interactor encapsulates the business logic. Uh, for example, like restaurant app, let, uh, let's suppose, the interactor may contain logic for ordering food or making reservations. And one thing to notice that entity and the uh, interactor, they are closely related to the business. Uh, they should not change if we change our framework. Uh, or delivery mechanism. It doesn't change if we are showing it in a web app or mobile app or whatever. So the next module is the presenter. Uh, this is kind of blue between our framework and our business layer. It receives data from the interactor layer and it shapes and molds and brings it a format which is usable to be shown to the user interface and passes it to the another layer called view. And in our mobile application, iOS application, the view is uh, like we deal with UI kit generally. Yeah. So we have another important thing that is router. Router is basically helpful for navigating between flow. Let's suppose we have restaurant list. We want to go to the restaurant detail list or ordering something. So in this flow management is handled by router. So. The, we have defined the responsibilities of these modules, but these modules don't work standalone. They need to talk to each other. So we need to define a kind of message passing. And those things are governed by the second rule, that is dependency inversion principle. It simply states that high-level module should not depend on low-level module, and both should depend on abstraction. Uh, let's. Uh, uh, you like let's apply these rules to our architecture. So, uh, in order to understand this, first we need to define some hierarchy so that we'll know which are the higher level modules and which are the lower level modules. So we draw concentric cycle circles, and uh, like the inner we go, uh, the higher the module becomes. 
So if we visualize it like this, our entity interactor, those compose the higher level modules and the other parts, presenter, router, and view, they are the lower level modules because they deal with the details. Next, we have to define the interaction, how these modules interact with each other, like how data passing takes place. So we start with view. Uh, view receives user events, and it, uh, it uh, invokes appropriate method on the presenter saying that, OK, user has tapped this button. You better do something. And presenter uh, understands, OK, I need to do something. OK, this button is tapped. I need to fetch some data from the interactor. Yeah. And interactor receives that uh, command, and uh, OK, it uh, interacts with the entity layer and uh, find out the data and hands it uh, like hands over to the presenter now presenter has the data and it will like uh, uh, process the data uh, in a format which will be usable by the view and hand it over to view and finally view will show the data to the user so this is how uh, the model will interact now we'll have to define the dependency like who's which module should have reference to whom here we'll really apply those two rules. Uh, here we have uh, entity and interactor. These are the uh, higher level modules. So according to the rule, interactor or entity should not have any reference of the view. Like they shouldn't know that, OK, there, sh there is a view I need to conform to the standard. No, they shouldn't do that. So let's take two a specific example. We have view and presenter. And presenter is kind of upper level than the view. So according to our principle, so uh, the presenter should not have, you know, like a direct reference to the to view. So here in this case, it is directly a reference to the view. So we kind of uh, break these dependencies will introduce a layer called view protocol. So now view will conform to this protocol and presenter will keep a reference to this protocol. So uh, now we can, uh, let's suppose we are writing test, we can mock this view protocol and we can you know, replace these things. So uh, this is how like, uh, the data flow works. So this is our final architecture. So we have four protocols. View protocol, which will conform by uh, the view layer. Presenter protocol will be conformed by presenter. Interactor input protocol, which will be uh, uh, like uh, implemented by interactor. And we have another protocol, interactor output protocol, which will be uh, implemented by presenter. Basically, it is that like interactor calculates something and sends the data to the presenter. It will be handled by that interactor output protocol. Yep. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of very mouthful. <laughs> so uh, we have defined those uh, four modules. And uh, the important thing is that we need to define the routing part, how we go from one flow to another. Uh, for that, we define a protocol called scene protocol. And it will have just one getter property view controller. And like uh, we define an enum conform to this protocol. and. Uh, each of the case provide appropriate view controller. Yeah. And uh, we have the scene protocol, correct? And we'll uh, define uh, a module called router, which will be helpful for navigating from one flow to another. So we define this class, which will have uh, methods like launch and present. You can have dismiss also. So uh, the thing with this that like uh, uh, in uh, iOS uh, application, our uh, uh, navigation from one flow to another has to go through our UI kit because our UI kit knows how to do the transitions. So we need to anyhow incorporate the UI kit. But if we do uh, like incorporate UI kit over here, so something kind of uh, it it becomes tightly coupled with the router. So we introduced another layer, scene presenter protocol. It will have methods like present or dismiss. And our view controllers or our view layer things will uh, conform to this protocol and define the way the transitions to, should take place. So the router will uh, just say, OK, present this protocol, so represent this scene. 
using this scene presenter, and we are good to go. Yeah. Now, uh, in our application, like presenter uh, will handle the uh, routing part. Like presenter has the logic, like okay, this uh, if this thing happens, we need to go to the view controller. If that happens, we want to go to the other view controller. So presenter will have uh, the reference to the router and view will basically conform to the protocol scene presenter protocol. Yeah, I think now we are good for the implementation. Uh, so uh, we'll take the example, let's, let's suppose we are building an app for um, restaurant, uh, uh, like fetching nearby restaurants. So uh, in the, our uh, home screen, we'll see list of restaurants. So we'll have first view protocol. We'll define the view protocol. First, it will have a reference to the restaurant list presenter protocol. It will be a get set property because it need to uh, uh, it need to invoke some methods on the presenter. Okay, this event has occurred, and probably it will do like reload list or show error, right? Then we'll go to the presenter protocol. It will have a, to the reference to the restaurant list view protocol because it needs to instruct, okay, I have received the data, you need to show it. And to the interactor input protocol because it needs to fetch data. And obviously, I've discussed like you should have a router and scene presenter, and it should do some tasks related to user interaction, like, okay, you did it, did it occur, we have to do something, then did select. And interactor protocol, we have two kinds of protocol, restaurant list, interactor input protocol. So this will be reference to the presenter. It will method, we'll have method like fetch nearby restaurants. And we have the final protocol, <laughs> restaurant list uh, interactor output protocol. It will have just one method, uh, restaurant received. So we'll uh, use these protocols and define our view, presenter, and interactor layer. Yep. And finally, we need to wear them together. <laughs> We define all the uh, concrete classes, and we wear them together like this. So this is how, uh, like in a traditional approach, we do one module in a uh, following the Viper architecture. So far, so good. Like I, I like that uh, the responsibilities are properly segregated, and we can test each module, right? But something didn't feel right. I saw the repetition of patterns. When I started developing other modules, I had like this. We have restaurant list view protocol and detail view protocol. And you see, both have the presenter, just that they have different type. And here, in all the cases, we have these four elements. Same here. Yep. And another thing is that for each module, I have to write all these protocols and all these mocks for testing. So I was like, it's too much work. <laughs> we could do it better. So uh, let's revisit our architecture. Uh, first, we'll start with presenter protocol. What is the job of the presenter? It will basically handle the events, user events uh, handed by, handed over by the view. So we'll call it event listener, which will listen event of type view event. Next, we have interactor input protocol. What does it do? It uh, receives request from the presenter. So basically, this is the request listener. We'll say that okay, a request listener listening to the type interactor request. Next, we have interactor output protocol. This is basically the uh, when interactor calculates something and gives back to the presenter. So this is nothing uh, but the response listener. The presenter is listening to the response given by the interactor. So we'll call it in, uh, response listener listening to interactor kind of response. Next, we have view protocol. This is nothing but it receives commands from the presenter. So we'll call it command listener, which will uh, receive command, a uh, presenter command. Yep. So far, so good. Let's go back to do some coding. Uh, 
Uh, so on the first layer, we'll uh, define some empty protocols like view event, presenter command, interactor request, interactor response, so that we can unify them. Uh, we'll see how we can do that. First, define uh, event listener protocol. This will be a generic protocol over uh, view type of event. It will have just one method called handle the event. Similarly, we'll have command listener generic over presenter command, and it will handle commands. We have request listener generic over interactor request, and uh, response listener uh, generic over interactor response. Right? Now, let's define our view presenter and interactor protocol. So let's focus on the view. Uh, like we already have discussed so far that view receives command from the presenter. So we'll make it conform to this protocol, like it will, uh, ha it will conform to command listener protocol. Next, it needs to send uh, like, e like event to, uh, to the presenter. So we'll, have, we'll say that, OK, it can receive the presenter command, and it has to uh, uh, send the data someone who can listen to that event. So we write like this, where event listener, event listener. But the problem is that this is a generic protocol. We can't do that. Um, so we'll do type eraser. We define a class, any event listener, which will conform to this protocol, event listener, and uh, like implement the method handle and encapsulate our work in a closure. Now, instead of doing this, we'll do this. That's easy. Next, we'll define our presenter. So uh, the presenter has two uh, roles, kind of. A, it will uh, listen to the event from the view, and it will listen to the response received by, by the uh, interactor. So in the beginning, we see it will conform to event listener and response listener. And it will have uh, the uh, uh, it will have uh, a reference to the router as well and scene presenter as well. And here you, you see it has also reference to the request listener so that it can inject its request and the command listener which can it can command okay do this thing. Similarly, we'll have the interactor which will conform to protocol uh, request listener because it's basically listening uh, to the request uh, from the presenter. So it will be generic over in, uh, interact response, and it will have one, uh, uh, proper, uh, one uh, property called a respond listener so that it can uh, you inject its data into this. So finally, we'll have one generic builder. Uh, in a generic builder, We'll see, uh, we'll pass this view presenter interactor and scene presenter, and we will define the constraints. We'll say that views event should be, uh, views event type should be equal to the type of presenter's event. Next, interactor's request type should be equal to the presenter's request type. Interactor response type should be equal to the presenter's response type. And uh, views command type should be equal to pre uh, presenter's command type. So, and in this, uh, inside this block, we'll write the glue code we have seen before. So, let's take an example how we will refactor our code. Uh, in the initial approach, we first define our view protocol. Now we don't have to do that. We'll just define one enum conforming to the view event protocol and define, OK, in this view, I'm expecting view did load and did select action, did select events. Uh, next, the presenter command, uh, it will uh, uh, it define an enum uh, restaurant list presenter command. It will conform to presenter command. And it will have methods like, OK, you reload and show some error. Similarly, we'll have restaurant list interactor request, which will have one case fetch nearby restaurants, and uh, interactor list, in, uh, sorry, <laughs> restaurant list instructor res, uh, response, which will have the case like restaurant received. So for each module, we'll define these four enums. And 
I'll show you how, uh, like, compile this approach. Uh, is so helpful that compiler will help us to write things. So now for each module, we don't have to write different view protocol, interactor protocol, or something like that. We already define a protocol like view, presenter, and interactor protocol. We'll just use that. So in this example, you'll see restaurant list presenter, how it will conform to the presenter protocol, and the compiler will do the rest of the things. It will just say that, OK, these are the types you need to conform to. Uh, we'll see all the magic. Yep. And inside that block, we can handle individual events. Is it interesting? So let's recap. So we started with the problem that we have to write a lot of protocols. So for each app flow, we have to define these many things. We don't have to do that. We'll just define these enums. And while we're testing, we have to write these mocks for everything. So we don't have to do that. We'll just these four classes, and we are good to go. Yeah. So. Uh, this is it. Uh, thank you for having me. So this is the, like uh, the first one is the link to you know, the repo. So I will encourage you to clone it and play around it. So if you encounter any bug or any new suggestion, you are welcome. Let's improve this a bit. And uh, this is my Twitter handle. And uh, I blog in Medium. So please follow me. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs>